Okay. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again, and Jesus is Lord in my life. I'm so glad that my heart has found a home inside of him and that he has found a home inside of my heart. I really don't take that for granted, that he has saved me, he has loved me, that he continues to save me every day, and that in the end, he shall save me into eternity together with him. Amen? It's such an honor to stand here every single time. Um, I bless the Lord for the opportunity to share God's word with you today. Today I'm going to be sharing just a couple of reminders, or just a reminder actually, uh, and I'm going to be titling it, Remember the Why. Remember the why. The why. Remember the why. I would like it to be just a bit interactive, maybe not in the fact that you will speak back to me, but in the fact that I will require you to engage every part of yourself um, because it needs to be interactive. It's like a, a practical class that I would like us to do together. All right? Remember the why. I'm reading from the book of First of Second Timothy, the second uh, epistle of Paul to the apostle, um, Paul the apostle to Timothy, his son. Second Timothy, chapter one. I would like to read actually all of it because I know I have a gift of speaking fast. I will be able to read all of it in a short time. I hope. All right, you can read together with me, you can move together with me. Rather, I'm reading in the New King James, and it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. According to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. He says to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. He says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing... I remember you in my prayers day and night, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remember you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Seven, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel, according to the power of God. Nine, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us by Christ Jesus before time began. Verse 10. He says, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Lord, Savior, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him until that day. Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. Are you alive in this house? All right. As we continue to look at this um, letter or this epistle that Paul is writing to the son Timothy, it's just a little bit of background. Paul has met Timothy. Paul had a couple of missionary journeys, okay? And so Paul meets uh, Timothy in um, his second missionary journey, uh, which is, you could find that in the book of Acts chapter 16. The first one, you could find it in Acts chapter 14. Now in Acts chapter 16, uh, which is an interesting story there, uh, Paul goes out and he almost loses his life, actually. Uh, he's beaten and left to death. Uh, and when the people, actually what happens, an interesting account of Acts, uh, of, of that story, that uh, they have gathered in a place and um, they find a, a, a man who is crippled, all right? So it's Paul and Barnabas, they find a man who is crippled and um, Paul, these people, they are preaching, they are speaking, okay? So this man uh, is looking at Paul and Paul looks at him and the Bible says, and when Paul saw that this man had enough faith, he tells him, rise up and walk. And the man skips up and walks. And the people around there are in awe. Of course, they have just witnessed a miracle. This man had never walked all his life. And so he stands up and the people are like, wow, this man, these two men 
are great gods. They actually say that this one man is called, um, I don't remember the name of the god, is it Zeus? And the other one, they say Paul is the one that is called Hermes, the Greek gods anyway, that is no, of no importance. And so Akina Paul, they start to say, no, 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 we are just mere men. But the men are like, no, 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 you guys are gods. So the priest of those Greek temples, they go out, uh, they prepare bulls and they want to come and sacrifice to them. And these men are so, are so thrilled and they are so jazzed by the fact that they have witnessed Akina Paul doing a great thing in the name of the Lord. But they don't know that. They think these people are gods. And then there are men who come from another town. And by the time they arrive there, they come and they convince these people who are so excited at Akina Paul, they want to sacrifice to them. They are thinking they are gods. These people have come and they convince the men. They are telling them, this, this, these are not good guys. And instantly, the people who are so excited and were ready to celebrate Akina Paul, they turn against them. The Bible actually says they stoned Paul so severely, took him outside the city and left him there. The reason they left him was because they thought he was dead. Imagine that. See, the heart of man is just a very interesting thing. One minute, people are dancing and celebrating and saying, you're the one. The second minute, they are stoning you. I can imagine the confusion. That's why when Paul is talking about the many things he has gone through, he says, I, we have been perplexed. Perplexed is like a next level of confusion. He's like, I'm a jionea majabu kwa imaisha. Ukona binadamu deka moja, and I'm sure this is not the first time. You remember when Paul, also, um, when they're coming to the island of Malta, and they have been shipwrecked, and then, you know, they, fall to, they, they finally find themselves at the, at the island of Malta, and Paul is going to gather some um, firewood, and then he's, he's beaten by a viper. The whole thing, these people are saying, this man is, very, is a very tormented man. This man is an evil man. Imagine the whole, the whole uh, ship has been shipwrecked because of this evil man. And then they come out and then uh, they're like, maybe this man is not, maybe he's not such a bad person. And then he's beaten by vipers again. And they're like, oh no, you are right. This man is that. The heart of man is a very confusing thing. So anyway, Paul has gone through a lot of these things. So in this time, he's beaten and left almost to dead, okay? And then the Bible says, and the believers gathered themselves around him. And the Bible says, and Paul came up, he revived, okay? Came up, went back into that city. Imagine the nerve of that man of God, the boldness, after he has just about been killed. He went, goes back into that city, and then the next day he leaves and goes out, I think, towards Derb or Derbe or whatever it's called. Anyway, when Paul is in those missionary journeys, he goes out and he meets Timothy, this young man who um, the people back in those days used to, he was a responsible young man. That's the, uh, that's the history of um, this, this young man called Timothy. The history is that uh, he's a responsible young man and, um, you know, uh, having met him, he has been brought up and the, the, the grandmother, the show of Timothy was a believer and the mama Timothy was also a believer. Okay, now before that, um, or be initially, the dad was also, the dad was Greek, I think. So he wasn't a believer. Well, not initially, at least. Um, but the mothers, the mother and the grandmother, the mothers, had done a great job, okay, in bringing him up. Paul actually makes mention of that and says, um, I bring to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which was first in your grandmother and then in your mother, Eunice, uh, and I'm persuaded is in you also. That's just, I, I just thought as I was reading this, I thought that's such an interesting thing for parents, that parents you cannot afford to stop. You cannot afford to give up. You cannot afford to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing in bringing up your children in the ways of the Lord. It is a responsibility that is given to us. Bona sifiwe. Come on, bona sifiwe. You remember when Bishop is always telling us that there are two things you can't stop doing, which is neology, which is, uh, which is praying for your children on your knees, and tocology, which is talking. Talk to them about Jesus. Talk to them, talk to them. I like to say many times when I'm speaking that um, before I first gave my life to Jesus Christ in high school, I had met Jesus Christ in the house through my mom. Okay, I had encountered, it was not when, I, when the altar calls were being made, I knew who was being talked about because I had seen that modeled around. It is a responsibility of you guys and of, well, us guys, as parents, uh, to take care and make sure that this, this stewardship we've been given, we're going to do something about it. Don't you stop. Don't say, ah, sasa wa mefika teenage, sasa, unajua sasa... Akona a mind of their own. Sa meka nyumbani ana kasiri kanga niki muamsha ati ata aja kasiri kabado unamwambia chungmalo 
Nambia <laughs> arise. Talitha kum. We are going to the house of God. By hook or by crook or by both. All right? Anyway, that's just an interesting point that I saw uh, as, I was, as I was reading this. That if Lois, the Shosho, was it Lois that was the Shosho? If Shosho or Timothy Lois had not done her part, we almost, you could imagine, you, you could say, we almost wouldn't have the gospel the way we have it right now. We don't know much about Lois apart from this that she's mentioned here. We don't know much about Eunice, but we know a lot about Timothy and a lot about Paul. Now, if the foundation had not been set by Shosho and Mama Timothy, we wouldn't have the gospel as it is right now. I want you to think about it. That's why I said today needs to be a bit interactive. If you allow this thing to get into your mind, you start to tell yourself, if I only play my small little part. I remember when I was in campus, I studied environmental science in school. Uh, when I was in campus, um, there's this story. We, we learned a lot from um, Professor, the late Professor Wangari Mathai uh, and attended, listened to enough sessions, that enough speeches by hand, attended enough of those uh, things where she was giving speeches. Um, and I remember when one of the stories that she used to say a lot was um, uh, about this small bird, I forget, the hummingbird, the story about this small hummingbird. It's a very, very tiny bird. But it says that once there was a big forest fire and all the big animals in the forest came, the big elephant with its trunk came and said, oh, this fire is too big for me to put out. I cannot do anything. It is beyond me. And the lion came, and it could have the capacity of carrying a bit more water in its mouth. But it was like, I now what can? If the elephant is not doing anything, and though it has a big trunk, surely me, small me, can I do anything? And other animals that were there were saying, ah, I can't do anything. But the small hummingbird came and went to the stream and took some water in its small tiny beak and came and threw it right in the fire and went back and did that and went and did that because it was saying, if everybody does their own small part, the fire is going to be put out. And I think to myself, that is the place of every believer. That is the heart of every believer. That is the place of standing in the gap. You can't say, hey, this nation is too big. This nation is too corrupt. I can't do anything about it. My children are too lost. I, they are so addicted. I can't do anything. You cannot afford. But at the end of the day, you cannot stop doing your small part about things. Pray for this nation, beloved. Pray for your family. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your marriage. Pray for the people around you. Pray for your office. Pray for your boss. Keep on praying and don't stop your own little part. That's what Eunice and Lois did. And blessed be God for the work that they did, that they understood their own little part, their small little part, so they were able to do something a bit more. And they contributed to what the gospel is right now. Bona Anyway, uh, they continue and it says, therefore I remind you to start up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So Paul and Timothy started this relationship. It started as a mentor-mentee relationship. And so he laid his hands on him and imparted the gift of God on the inside of him. Now Paul is reminding Timothy also another important thing. Also the same topic and says to him, there is an expectation of the kingdom. God has an expectation over your life. You have been given gifts. God has placed something on the inside of you, but you cannot just afford to sit pretty just because God is the one that has given to you. You're saying, oh, God is going to use me. God, ile siku mungu atataka atanitumia, mungu anataka kukutumia sasa, hapa hivi. And you might not be, have the opportunity of standing on the pulpit here, but wherever it is that you're going, that is your pulpit. When you're in the matatu, that is the pulpit. The way you carry yourself as you're driving on the streets, that is your pulpit. The way you are in your family, that is your pulpit, wherever it is you find yourself. That is an opportunity for you to do your own little thing. So what are you doing with the gift of God in your life? The Bible says, fan it into flames. Fan it into flames. Do something about it. Are you finding an opportunity um, somewhere? And I have said this many times in the, in the, uh, to our uh, young people in the youth ministry, that if you see a problem in DCIK, if you see a gap, that gap is there because of you. Don't be telling us that it, mm, out of focus. about your story. Because the reason that you can notice it is because you actually have a, maybe that is your area of skill, your area of training. Ama it's just a talent that you have. You don't know how to operate, but you are able to know. Some of us, when we look at these screens, I don't know whether I'm in focus or out of focus. You are just like, is your picture ziko poor? Ziko bright? Leo zina kafiti? 
ziko na mwangaza nyingi sana am i you're listening you're like this and you're like ah the mixing of the sound is not so good so you're always going unasema mimi nakujangaa church kama sio bishop kuhubiri by the way me church sound ya church inakuwa ngatu mbaya sana lakini nakujanga tu juu ya bishop bishop ana ubiringi vizuri sana so every day you're complaining wako ngwa church gani na kuanga deliverance lakini sound ya huko imagine you're the you're the solution to that gap come and enroll and say i want to do something because god has placed a gift in you you will never know what it is until you fan it into flames you see the way you can see some some red hot coals and they are there they can they can still cook a meal but it will take forever but when somebody comes and starts to hurl terror that's a word to nini fun yes you start to fun to fun it it comes alive as a big mighty flame and then you're able to cook the food in almost half the time or even more that is what is happening when you're sitting on your gift we are still going to get where we are going because we cannot thwart the plans of god we are not that powerful but it will take us a very long time what are you doing about your gift hallelujah in your family what are you doing about it fan into flames the gift of god so he says therefore after speaking to this man says to him therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our lord nor of me his prisoner but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of god you see in the day of paul and i said i'm just trying to also give a background of where this is coming as we continue to go along in those days of paul following somebody who was crucified was not a very interesting thing right now i, I read a, a commentary last night by um, a, a pastor called david guzik and he's saying you see in the present day we have we have um we have disinfected the cross and sanitized salvation <laughs> So it looks like a very safe thing. But back in those days to follow a man who was crucified. It was a what? It was a I don't know You why do you think Peter refused when he was told wewe you wewe ulikuwa na Yesu? Wewe ulikuwa na one of our pastors used to say ilikuwa ilikuwa house technician amekuja anaambia Peter ulikuwa na Yesu. Anasema nani? Mimi nilikuwa wewe. Hiyo maneno unasema sijui. He didn't refuse that because it wasn't a prestigious thing. You see right now we are able to say I am not ashamed to own my lot. <laughs> because right now it's an easy thing. But back in the day also because of the culture not everybody used to be crucified. The people that were crucified were crooked people like you and me. That's why Jesus was crucified because of you and me. Sindio. So um back in the day to follow somebody like that was not a small thing. So that is why Paul is saying to him do not be ashamed of the gospel because at in that time it was easy for somebody to want to just not be so you know to not be so autaki maneno ujulikane nayo sana so he says do not be ashamed of the testimony of our lord no of me his prisoner but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of god now when he's winding up that chapter you're going to find that um uko towards the the from us um 15 he's mentioning people who have turned away from him why for the same reason that I've given because it was not a very prestigious thing to be associated with this testimony of the lord especially when somebody has been put in prison they used to come for you you see it wasn't the constitution like we know it right now they say i know my rights you can't arrest me if they came for bishop here and they put him in prison the next people in line will be the pastors sema tunasikia kuna mapasta wanatembea na huko ni kina nani pastor kibera anashika kibera Oh, Pastor Brian, mimi. Mimi hata nilikuja kwa hiyo pulpit kama guest speaker. Mimi hata <laughs> That was what is to happen back in those days. People used to run away. They didn't want to be associated with this testimony of our Lord. Only when uku chini ma underground uku, ma underground church it was okay. But in places even to this day by the way, let us not be so um comfortable in where we are and forget that there are still places where believers are being persecuted. In the Arab world there are people who continue to hide themselves. I will never forget a story when I joined the worship team just after high school in 2010 and Pastor Millicent shared this story in one of our practice sessions and it was a it was a, a um she was reading a, a a journal a certain journal that a certain lady had written and this lady was talking about how they used to read the bible was it in Somaliland or somewhere in those Yeah in Somaliland and they used to read the bible and how it was was this small blue Gideonite bible Gideon's bibles Gideon's international bibles that pastor Dan um helps to distribute uh, this this small blue bibles they had gotten a copy and so they had organized themselves as the small underground church and what they did was they they had to mutilate not mutilate they had to cut the pieces of the bible okay because 
not everybody could have it. It was almost illegal. Ni kama kupatikana na firearm. Hivi sasa. Don't you think it's interesting that it was, it was a weapon? The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. So the Bible is a weapon. So they didn't know that anyway, but they said that ah, this, uh, it, it, is like a, it is like a weapon. It is wrong. You cannot have it. And so they cut, wana cut a baby lane to pieces. Wana sema, wewe leo unaenda na hii first Timothy. He, wana irarua. Wana sema, how we are going to do this, they organize themselves. We are going to put it in a capital latrine. So they put it in a pit latrine kwa zile mbao wana ificha hapa hivi. Ini incoming, hini outgoing. Kwa hivyo hule akimaliza nayo, anakuja anayeka hapa kwa incoming. Wo unajua, ukienda kutu, unajua kuna mtu atakataza kutumia latrine. So ukifika huko unaenda unaingia kwa latrine. Unachukua kwa incoming. Wewe ile yako ulikuja nayo unaikunja, unairudi, unairudisha so that the other person can come. Imagine, to this day there are people that are still doing that. To read the Bible. That's why we need to pray for all peoples. Hallelujah. That we are not so blinded by our own comfort in Kenya and our freedom of worship. You need to be thanking God for that. It's a real gift. There are people, in the, imagine in 2020, together with all the things that are happening, there are people that don't have the word of God to encourage them. What a sad, sad thing in this day and age. But it is also such an encouragement to think that the word of God cannot be put in chains. Hallelujah. Anyway, so that is just an example, like in the day of Paul, of people who um, are suffering and there's the underground church and what is happening out there. In the days of Paul, it was even worse because people used to be persecuted and killed. Paul, while he's writing this, he's actually in prison. This is actually, um, I think, the last letter that Paul writes to Timothy just before he dies because I think after, after chapter 4 of, of um Second Timothy, Paul is then executed and he dies. So this is the last letter that he's writing. There's a lot of passion in here, you can tell. But you don't, something that you don't experience here is sadness. You don't experience sadness while Paul is writing this, even though he knows that execution is not so far, just a couple of weeks away. It's not so far, he's just about to be executed, but there's roaring victory on the inside of this letter. So he says to him, um, do not be ashamed. Share with me in the power of his sufferings, verse 8, uh, for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. It is important for you to remember the testimony of our Lord. Um, it says, according to the power of God, in verse 8, it says, who has saved, verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. That it is God that has done the work of saving. As we were singing in the morning and crying out, Hosanna, the one who saves us. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. You remember the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And that's what they were crying. They were saying, salvation has come. Hosanna, the son of David has come to save us. Then Hosanna in the highest. Let the angels cry out that salvation has come. God himself has come to save us. Hallelujah. Um, it says, God himself who has saved us, and to Jesus Christ, um, yes, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before time began. He has now revealed by the appearing of our Lord and Savior, who has abolished death, this is what Jesus Christ has done, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We have such such a gift, ladies and gentlemen. We have such a gift that has been poured out onto every one of us. Not like the Old Testament men of faith because they had not experienced the power of somebody who had died and risen again. We have that. You see, the fact that Jesus Christ died and rose again, it says volumes. It speaks, in fact, that is the whole, the whole thing on which our testimony or our faith is built around, that Jesus Christ died, but he did not die. Uh, die only. He did not stay dead. He rose again. But he did not just die and rise again. He stayed risen. That's why we are able to say Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. There are many people that died and were risen back to life in the day of Jesus. But like Pastor Beatrice likes to say, you have never met with Lazarus walking around in this day and age, even though he was brought back to life. Have you? Alifufuliwa. Jairus' daughter si alifufuliwa. Lakini ya ujapatana na Haujasikia kuna mama mmoja na kule Jerusalem anaishi bado anaitwa Jairus Dor alifufuliwa na Yesu hata kama alifufuliwa bado alikufa but we have one and that is a powerful thing Jesus Christ died did not stay dead he rose again but he stayed risen Jesus Christ is alive and that changes everything beloved that changes everything 
Why? It continues to line out. It says down there, um, he has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We are no longer fumbling around the darkness. We are not like people who are walking around the darkness, groping to try and find what the way is. No, we know the way. On Friday in the worship experience, as we were crying out and saying that you made a way, I kept thinking to myself, how exciting is it that the way has a name and his name is Jesus? Hallelujah. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by me. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures evermore. The way to the Father is Jesus. When you get to the Father, there is fullness of joy. Not just happiness, because we said happening, happiness is brought by happenings. The happenings of this life, they are the things that bring happiness. But joy is found in Jesus. I remember also an encouragement that Pastor Alice was reminding us the other day. Uh, in one of our meetings. And she was telling us that, um, you see, the Bible says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And it was such an interesting thought. I've never thought about it. And she said that, you see, the thing about weep weeping is that weeping comes for a sleepover, but joy comes to dwell. I thought, wow. Weeping in a kujanga usiku in a kuja in a lala. In a lalilila. <laughs> Inakuja sleepover. Isi venye mgeni akikuja kwako, anakuja, lakini siku yake hapo sio kwake. Hata akikuja leo, hata alale na alale usiku ingine, ataenda kwake siku moja. Ataenda tu. Yaani weeping imekuja sleepover. And when I think about this year, I don't know about you, but see there has been weeping. And it looks like this weeping is staying. Oh, would I encourage somebody this morning and remind you, it doesn't matter how weeping is staying, it is not staying forever. It has only come for a sleepover. It is on its way somewhere. And that somewhere is not here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What a powerful reminder. And this is what the Bible is reminding us today. It says that Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This is what we have received. This is what you accepted. When you gave your life to Jesus, this is what you are taking to yourself. This is what you had understood. And so I want to ask you just two questions. The first question is going to be this. Why did you give your life to Jesus? If you're here, you're a believer. For the people who are unbelievers, don't you worry. I'll come to you in just a minute. But help us in this place. If you are a believer, I want you to ask yourself, and if you can write it down, if you can find your why, if you can find your why did you give your life to Jesus? Why did you give your life to Jesus? Now let me give you my story. I gave my life to Jesus on the 17th of March in 2006. I was in high school. It was around 9.30 in the evening, I remember, because it was a weekend challenge, all right? That was a Friday evening. Now what was happening around that time is that... Um, it was first time I had just joined Form 1. It was not so long from when I had joined. What used to happen is that the Form 4s, Form 4s used to come and do what was called harvesting, okay? They used to come and harvest. When I could have classes at Form 4s, form perhaps it was 930 usiku. So Form 4s, if you have 930, you have to come and get to the madrasa. Sasa. Wow, ndiyo masimba marara. What are they doing? They are harvesting. They are taking from, from ones to go and do their laundry. Waende wakawafulie nguo. Waende wakawafanyie entertainment. Tunajua ile unambia, we, mono, chota giza. Enda utu chota giza. Wanacheka sana. Such wickedness. But... <laughs> so, anaenda wana... Una, yeah, they used to come for harvesting. Masema, and you see, it was very traumatizing. All of you are seated in a class, like 50 of you from ones, green people. And you have just been humbled by life because Kule Class 8, I was in a boarding school. Kule Class 8, sisi ndio tulikuwa kusema. Si Class 8, nyi ndio the nini. Sisi ndio huko tulikuwa tulabounce, tunasema, we, Class 5s, ebu acheni yo mchezo mkonayo. Sisi ni watu wakubwa. Ah, lakini kwa kweli maisha kizungu mkuti. Malipo ni hapa hapa. So me, with what I, I used to have as a big mouth when I was in class 8, now we have come to form 1. Hata sauti yako itoki. Unauliza, unaitua nani mono? Sama, unaitua, unaitua, unaitua mwashigati, tupatie jina inasemeka. Sama, unaitua Brian. <laughs> and then they ask you where you're coming from, and if you say you're coming from Nairobi, that's another thing, you're going to buy bread. Forget that you yourself, you're, you're wondering how you will buy bread yourself. You know, and they, when do unamnulia mkate alafu uyende kwa kanti? I don't like to remember my Form 1 life, you know? Just a lot of suffering and pain. <laughs> anyway, they used to come for what was called harvesting. And so you are just seated there, a bunch of very fearful Form 1s, and they would come in and they would pick out a Form, and I say, 
wewe nifuate and you are seated there you are wondering oh god please let it not be me let it anakuruka anasema wewe nifuate you are like oh jesus christ thank you akifika kwa mlango anasema wewe kuja unaangalia nyuma unasema unaangalia nyuma you just follow them and they go and they tell you to do you know it was it wasn't bad things but you know you're doing laundry at night when nguo zako hata uwezi ukafua kwa sababu ukianika zinaibiwa lakini wewe unamfulia zake uzianike ukae hapo uziangalie zikauke just bad things you know it was just really really bad things but anyway when that was they used to come at around 9:30 what i learned in the course of time was that in those few like a month i was there before the weekend challenge came what i learned was that when for the for, few from ones who gave their lives to jesus there used to be a follow up department what here in this church we call discipleship all right and when you give your life to jesus the discipleship members used to come around every form one class and they would come when you get give your life to jesus there was someone assigned to you a brother okay a disciple who would come and ask you what class do you belong to and i say i'm in form 1l and they would go with me and show me in your class enyu eh una ketting you wapi unaonyesha hapa ndio na keti all right uko kwa dom gani nasema moya house mnaenda naye kwa moya house kitanda gani cube number 20 anakuonyesha hapa in ndio kitanda yangu why they needed to do that was because every evening at 9:25 they would come to pick you and take you to prayers in the power room and every morning at 5 in the morning they would come for you at your bed for morning devotion for 30 minutes all right i used to hate the morning part but i thanked god because in the morning there was no harvesting so i wanted to sleep in a little bit but they had to come and pick you so if you want the evening safety you also have to take the morning okay <laughs> that was the payment so anyway I learned much later na ni mtu tu aliniibia siri nilimuuliza kwa nini mnaenda ngapi na ama form form fours ambia si tunaenda ngapi power room so by the time the form fours are coming for harvesting the form ones for you have already been taken to the powers to the prayers in the power room so wakikuja wanapata ma empty spaces za wale waumini wa kristo ambao wamekwishanyakuliwa all right that's a good picture of rapture for me from the early stages of my um receiving jesus christ all right so i was like eh hey, but tell me more akanambia wangu akinikujia leo wewe twende na wewe but i was so afraid because i was like sasa tukienda alafu nikatazwe kwa mlango unajua uongo wa shetani fear is from the devil ah make the lord deliver us from fear in jesus name we prayed about it not so long ago on, was it tuesday during the icc night and we cast out the spirit of fear and that shall be permanent in jesus name because fear is a lie from the enemy that's not the spirit that god has given to us so anyway i delayed a little bit hadi ikafika like we can challenge during we can challenge i thought ah this is my opportunity to publicly say yes to jesus christ so we are asking ourselves why did you come to jesus in the first place my reason for coming to jesus in the first place was a wrong reason because i i thought okay i want to be saved sustained and satisfied that's what the preacher said but i also want a lot of safety So it was three S's but me I added a fourth one which was safety. Saved su- sustained satisfied and then I add sa- safety 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 and to be kept safe. So I gave my life to Jesus Christ. That was my why. But you see as I continued to grow in Jesus, I started to learn. Now every Saturday evening together with those evening prayers and morning, every Saturday evening from 4:30 to around 6:30 for about 2 hours they used to come around and we would be gathered all new believers would be gathered and we would sit down and they would teach us we had material from Kenya Schools Christian Fellowship and they would teach us disciple us it wasn't a very big class because not very many people stuck with it to the end but me I was serious about this safety issue i didn't want to wash anybody's clothes for a long time so i stuck with the class okay i sat down and they, we were taken through a lot of material we were we were grounded in the faith we were taught a lot of the things that i was taught at that time continue to stick and i bless the lord for it even to this day so my why began to change so the reason i asked you the first question why did you give your life to jesus if you're here and you're a believer i hope you put it down if you can remember it if you're not able to write i hope that you have put it in your mind call it to memory why for some of us it was because there was so much troubled in your life and somebody told you that ukimkubali yesu kutoka leo tabu zako zitakwisha ukampokea yesu lakini you and i both know <laughs> that that's not the story in fact if anything it's like you acquired a target on your back because the enemy is out to steal kill and destroy he's after your life he wants to put you down so the first why does not seem to be nini doing so well 
you found yourself maybe considering stepping back. Maybe you're in 2020 and you have never asked yourself your why, and all of a sudden you're wondering, why are things so difficult for me? Why? Why? When you're in that place right now, okay? But then for some of us, we came to Jesus for the right reasons, but then for some of us, we came to Jesus for the right reasons, because we realized earthly things have left us dry and only Jesus can satisfy. So we came to him. If that is your why, that's a good, that's a good why. Now I bring you to the second why. Because you gave your life to Jesus, whether for the good reasons or for the bad reasons, you have continued to stay in Jesus. I want you to ask yourself, why are you still in Jesus? That's the second why. Why are you still in him? Why are you still in Jesus? Allow me to submit to you because this is a question that you may not answer here right now. Even if you, you could write, you could begin. But I want to assure you that this is a question that you must answer every day of your life until Jesus Christ comes back for you. You have to keep reminding yourself, why am I still in Jesus? Why have I stayed this long? Some, there has to be something. When you're going through the darkness and the pit of life, remember to pause and ask yourself, why, why am I in this thing? That's why we are saying we need to remember our why. Remember the reason you came to Jesus. And Paul right here is reminding Timothy the why throughout from verse 1 to verse 12. He's reminding him, remember your why. Remember why. Because there was a gift that was put inside of you by the laying on of my hands. There was a price that was paid by this one that abolished death. There was a why. There is a reason why you came to this good thing. It was the good news. Paul says to him, the gospel. It was glad news. It was not mad news. It was not bad news. It was glad news. You are told that someone died for you. You have experienced him. You have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. That's why you're still in this thing. Hallelujah. You might not have thought about it. Some of us are seated here and you're saying, by the way, yeah, now come to think of it. And that's a beautiful thing. Continue to call it to memory. You cannot afford. Let me tell you, when you go through life like a zombie, as a believer, when you go through life without thinking about your why, it is very easy for the enemy to come in and put you out. But when your why is constant, those of you who might be here and are in relationships or you're married, because that's a choice, Okay, you have to constantly, I would imagine, you have to constantly keep reminding, remembering why you got into it in the first place. I remember my math teacher once was telling us um, how his wife is a nurse and has been a nurse for very many years. <laughs> I was saying the uniform is a nurse, is it black and white or is it navy blue and white? So I'll go and say, my wife has been looking the same since I married her. Our math teacher was telling us that. She's been looking the same since I married her. Because she works even night shift, day shift, weekend, a kokazi, and a kaga to black na white, black na white, black na white. Hadi sasa hata amezoea, hadi ya kinunuwa nguwa zingine ananuwa to black na white. It is either white or all black. But I cannot leave her because I have gotten used to that. Nimezoea yo black na white, naipeda sana. My favorite colors are black and white. I remember. And I thought, that's a very good reason that Mr. Mwiga was giving us back in that time. He kept reminding himself his why. When they are fighting, he's like, Ume ni kazirisha, lakini yo black na white ni naipenda sana. You must keep reminding yourself your why. You ask yourself, why are, we, why are we even friends? Why, even with us that are in just normal friendships, at some point, you will get mad at somebody and you'll be asking, why are we even friends? Why do I even... You, in, your, in your anger, then you remind yourself, you remember... Hakuna mtu mwingine naweza nikapigia simu hivi usiku na amke na aniombe. Wengine mko hapa you you are feeling like you are so done with this church. Hii DCK is here utaki maneno yake tena unataka kwenda. But you sit down and you have to remember your why. Why am why am I here? Then you remember the first day you came. Tukakufanyia. Amen. Jesus you felt so loved. He ukapelekwa ukakunywa chai na mandazi. Ah! Kama wapi tena? Unasema, these people are truly servants of God. Walionyeshwa na mungu si kukula breakfast kwangu. Atuku, tulionyeshwa, lakini bishop alionyeshwa kitambo. Siyo sasa leo peke yake. Alionyeshwa kitambo ya adi leo. <laughs> so you must sit and remember your why. You're like, pethe wacha nisitoke. Iyo kanisa kukiwa na kasavis tu hivi. Wakipata tuka reason, tunangushiwa chai na mandazi. Kukiwa na memo, inaongezo hata ndizi. Ah, nitaka kwa iyo kanisa. Unajuliza, why am, I, why am I a leader in that church? Ah, what one? E COVID season. Do I have some leaders in the house that have been like, ah, I'm done. I'm going to call this Pastor Mashigadi and tell him this thing for sales. Am I will just ghost them? 
juku explainia itakuwa kazi ngumu unajua ghost ghost way na appear na ina disappear so i will just ghost them huko alafu unapotea tu hivi tunauliza where are the reports for the sales how many people met hata ushiki simu haujibu messages una to blue tick una to ghost tu mm, sawa but if you're here and you're in that place i want you to remember your why because there has to be a reason why you accepted this thing in the first place you must have sat down and thought ah the lord has been so good to me surely a question that bishop asks at the encounter when i consider all these things that the lord has done for me what is this that is so precious that i will not give away so that i will serve him he has been so good to me remember your why when you want to throw in the towel beloved i want to call you like paul was calling timothy and reminding him the why he has abolished death just for you he has secured a place in eternity just for you he has decided that you you should not you should not be destroyed in eternal damnation he has secured a place with him reconciled you back to the king of kings just because you can come to the place of god that is a great why for you to stay where you are Oh I want to pray that this week the Lord shall fill it with many wise many good wise that we will remember why why you continue to slave for that your family you're like how watu nimekasirika na wao nitatoka hapa kwa nyumba i am tired of being a slave sit down and ask the Lord Lord remember, remind me the why you're like i love this man so much because there's a time he came and he found me when i was just there in the back parts of huko kushago kwetu akakuja akaniambia sijaona mtu kama wewe mrembo kwa kweli macho yako yanatangaza yanaangaza kama miale ya jua kwa kweli wapendeza unasema <laughs> guy you stop it ukasema i do remember your why oh may the lord remember remind us the why your why your first why may not have been a very good why but imagine you have a good why of why you are staying in because you might have come in like me for the wrong reasons but the fact that you have stayed in tells you that there's something good in this thing. God is good, he can be trusted, he is faithful. Let me give you one simple more Kenya. This is the best guide to your why. Keep going through this book every day, you will find more than enough why's every day. Over a thousand why's for every day until Jesus comes back for you to stay in this sweet salvation. May the Lord encourage your hearts every day in Jesus name. Father we thank you for your word. We pray that Lord you will remind us every single day every single moment why you have called us. Why we stayed in this salvation. It must be because you are such a good God and we couldn't find this comfort anywhere else. Thank you Lord Jesus. Remind us oh yet one more time we pray remind us of the why. We are so grateful that our why is not found in our strength or our capabilities because those are fleeting our why is not found in the beauty of this life because that is so shifting oh god our why is found in the constant never ending never failing love of our lord and savior jesus christ you lord jesus you are our why remind us that every day and for everyone that is weary and tired i pray that you would remind them this morning for the person that is still on the fence wondering whether or not they should say yes to you why they would come to you i pray that you would reveal yourself to them right here right now that they would consider coming to you and knowing you whom to know is life eternal that is the most beautiful why that we would be reconciled back to you because what's there not to love about you lord jesus reveal yourself to us all this morning in jesus name we pray amen god bless you